Hi, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Lectors Training on Sunday Readings. Today, we'll prepare for the readings of September 15, the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our main references. We'll also refer to the book, New Exploring God's Word of Word and Life Publications. The brief history and the introduction to each of the readings is taken from the book, New Exploring God's Word. Among the most important messianic prophecies in the Old Testament are those found in the book of Isaiah, in the so-called oracles of the servant of the Lord. There are four of them in the book of Isaiah. The servant is one on whom the Spirit of the Lord rests with whom the Lord is well pleased, who patiently endures humiliations and suffering, and thereby wins forgiveness for sinners. In the end, he will be glorified by the Lord. The New Testament and the whole Christian tradition consider these four oracles or prophecies as having been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus himself made a reference to the suffering servant of the Lord. The first reading is the third oracle of the servant of the Lord. It emphasizes the trust-filled patience of the servant and his great self-confidence rooted in the strengthening assistance of the Lord God. To help you in your proclamation, here are some tips. Read the first reading as if you are the prophet speaking. Your voice should be calm, should be with calm, faith, and conviction. This is the heart of the message. God is ever at the side of the servant, shielding him from shame. And uh, these are words of gratitude, not anger. Make good use of the colorful language uh, plucked Buffett's spitting. The servant in the Old Testament may refer to a few believers who remained pure even in tribulation, or it may refer to Isaiah himself, who was also persecuted for imparting God's word to the people. Jesus is the fulfillment of this suffering servant in the New Testament. The final sentences contain the confrontational daring of a youth. After throwing out the challenge, no one accepts. He says that no one dares because God is his help. Then he asks if anyone can prove that isn't true. So let's practice with the full text, but let's go through some words first. This is rebelled. It is a verb, so stress on the second syllable. This is in the past tense. The ed has a sound of t, so you say plucked. This is a long e sound, beard. Say uh, buffets, buffets. This is another verb, so I stress on the second syllable, disputes. Okay. Um, these are questions not answerable by yes or no. So raise your voice, but lower down on the same one syllable word. The same is true here. Okay, now let's practice with the full text. First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. 
He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm expresses the suffering servant's prayer of trust in the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice in supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me the day I called. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The cords of death encompassed me. The snares of the netherworld seized upon me. I fell into distress and sorrow, and I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, save my life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low, and he saved me. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. For he has freed my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. In the second reading, St. James emphasizes that faith has to be accompanied by corresponding works. This echoes Jesus' well-known statement, I quote, Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven, unquote. To help you in your proclamation, here are some tips. As in a sermon, make the second reading touch people's minds and hearts. Be emphatic and proclaim it with conviction. Employ a conversational tone as if debating with a friend. This is St. James' very serious point. Be sure to highlight it. This, emphasize this because they effectively summarized the theme of the reading. His suggested response has the flavor of folksy and animated banter between friends. You challenge the other without hostility. I can prove my faith through my works. Can you prove your faith without any works? Okay, brothers and sisters, again, this is a question not answerable by yes or no. So raise and go down on the same syllable. Here, or oh, this one is answerable by yes or no. So you raise your voice on the last important word up to the end. Okay. All right. Uh, this one also is go up and go down. Now let's practice with the full text. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? So also, 
faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Join me again next week for the readings of September 22 the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Until then, goodbye, and God bless you all. Again, thank you.